The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. What time is it? I started to question myself if I was launching Lucha Underground and I had accidentally flipped over to Cinemax. Not a whole lot of faces shown as far when it comes to Brenda, so. <laughs> yeah. You're you're spot on there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the house that AJ Styles built. Uh, you know, like Nakamura, he's just such a great star. It doesn't matter what you do with him. People are going to cheer for him. Did you feel the gloriousness? Did you feel it? Bobby Roode did his job this is insane how great they are well i think the authors of pain are young prodigies that's how good we are representing bullet club this is what we do super kid party you look at the shield and then you look at the team of braun Strowman, cesaro sheamus the miz and kane five on three you know what you do You know what you do, Renee? You find out their weakness and you exploit it. What's the shield's weakness? Do do you got do you got one? You you, you don't do no. You you don't have one. Ego, ego is their weakness. And this there's a listen. We'll take on any three, four, five guys. And guess what happened? Now they're taking on five on three at TLC. I am the ultimate strategist. Think of someone who does strategy better than me. You can't. You want to know why? Because I think, I act, and I do, I manipulate, I figure out ways to make myself and my team win. The people I care about, I elevate, and that is what I do. That's why I'm the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, and that is why we're going to take down the Shield on Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling to the max. And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Deezer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling at the Max, episode 269, part 1. And of course, we are brought to you by W2Mnet.com, the place where you go find all your great wrestling needs and a lot more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and rate and review. Uh, make sure you do that, of course, wherever you get your podcast from. Maybe it's Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or any other place like iHeartRadio. Make sure you go hit that subscribe button and it'll get you all of our great episodes, plus all the great review shows we do during the week. You don't want to miss a minute of the action. I want to give a big special shout out to Formula1Mania.com and last word on ProWrestling.com. Both are very awesome sites and we appreciate their support. And I'm your host, Gary Vaughn, and along with me is Mr. Sean Garmer. What's up, everybody? And Mr. Paul Leeser. Hey, oh. And the whole crew is here tonight. I am so stoked about that. We are looking forward to a good show. We're going to have some big quick hits to jump into, kind of kind of delve into a few things here and there. Maybe, you know, some light conversation because there's not a giant, you know, big news topic to get into. But some very interesting tidbits that we can't wait to talk about. Plus, kind of cap off the Ring of Honor TV episode from this past week. So, got some cool stuff. I'm excited about this episode. Before we get into all that, though, guys, I just got to say this. Uh, it is the reason for the season. That's right. It is the fall season, and I love Halloween. I've already jumped into it, guys. I've already carved a pumpkin. Am I crazy, Sean? Uh, considering how much you love Halloween, no. Uh, I think, you know, it, it depends on when you do your decorating, right? If you decorate for Thanksgiving as well as uh, Halloween, then carving a pumpkin already would not... Will it be a bad thing whether you're going to turn it into a jack o' lantern or just have it there? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, you know, you know how much I love it, and you know, it's it's kind of funny because uh, you know I usually don't like that whole process, but you know, my daughter's getting a little older, so I thought, you know, why not? We're just have some fun and do it, and it turned out pretty well. Uh, but you know, I, I love 
Halloween season. I love horror movies and all that stuff. So they just made me feel good. And Paul, you know how chilly it is. It's kind of chilly outside for the first time uh, in a long time this early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it usually doesn't get cold around here until Halloween. Uh, this go around though, it's it got cold pretty quick, and we've gotten some lucky rainstorms, and it's it's got to be at least sixty outside, which is just awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's oh great. my god. I can't wait for hoodie weather. <laughs> I love hoodie weather. So the faster that can come, you know, the, the better for me, mm-hmm. you know. So it's, it's you know, really cool. And uh, I know that, you know, also the fall season brings a lot of great things. Like all, the, all our entertainment's back, like our favorite TV shows and all this stuff. So I, I my DVR is packed. I think it's like 95% right now. <laughs> Jesus. I know, dude. I got so much to watch. I, I've got like three episodes of Fear of the Walking Dead to get into. Plus, The Walking Dead is coming back this Sunday. Uh, and, of course, all my other great shows that I've tuned into every week. So it is going to be crazy, Sean. I mean, I, I'm depending on Hulu to keep my my, my DVR a little freer. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you turn into the uh, pay-per-view review and Gary is not there, you know why. He's- yeah. <laughs> Stuck watching all these shows that he has. Uh, thankfully, I have the cloud DVR with PS View, so I have like I think seventy. Of course, I have a bunch of different like soccer and stuff that gets recorded. But uh, yeah, I have like seventy five things that it get records at some point. And if I had to actually have memory that requires that, I'm sure I would be at like ninety nine percent or something. So. Jeez. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. It just—it's an infinite amount of uh, storage. So, oh boy. But hey, you also pay money for that entire service, so it's mm-hmm. not like you know they're doing it for free. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's—I've got a lot of things uh, to watch myself. So, plus, you know, with the U.S. not making the World Cup now, all I've had to do for the past four days is listen and read and hear people and watch all the traffic on Twitter about what everything needs to happen. So that has been my entire, like, since I haven't been on the show, basically, is dealing with that, which has been interesting. Yeah. So you came out of your depression, which I'm very happy with. So Uh, You have to. When you realize that, like, five years is a long time, Hmm. You kind of have to deal with it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, trust me, Packer fans are understanding that, the whole depression thing right now, so. Uh, yeah. Well, they're I in know Rogers Gary's just down. like, yes, and Rogers is down. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Technically, you know, uh, I'm kind of sad because half my fantasy teams are Aaron Rodgers uh, supporters, so. That's going to be a little rough on me, but, you know, I'll make through. I'll make it. So, but yeah. No, I mean, there's lots of things going on in our world. Uh, you know, lots of cool stuff to talk about, of course. You know, social media-wise, I'm sure you guys will be tuning in to us and checking out our lives, you know, on all these other topics we've been kind of chatting about here. But we do have wrestling to talk about, so why don't we do it? Let's jump into some of these quick hits. Somebody was unprepared, and it's this guy. Here we go. It's time for wrestling news. Quick hits. Take it away, Gary. All right, so we've got some interesting stuff to talk about, and the first thing we'll kind of jump into here is that WB recently did some tryouts, and one of the names that actually appeared on the tryout sheet was Madison Rain. I don't know, Paul. I, that's kind of an interesting name to see, you know, working out and trying out to be a part of the WB. They had a, a whole host of people here, but this was probably the most noteworthy name on there, although there were a ton of ex-NFL players at this thing, too. But I I, I, I don't have any... Di- like, I don't hate the idea. I've never been a giant Madison Rain fan, though, so like it doesn't really move the dial for me. But it is interesting that after so long in TNA, and she, she's had a pretty long career, that they're looking at her now... Uh, when I would argue she was probably at her best in the late 2000s, 2008, somewhere around there. 
Yeah, that is kind of interesting. You're right, and I think that Dom Table was prime for her to be, you know, trying mm-hmm. out for WWE. And I'm, she may have tried out at that time. I don't remember. Uh, but what I do know is it's kind of funny that this is, you know, another opportunity for her. And, you know, for the fact that I thought she was probably thinking, you know, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing in Impact or other places on the indie circuit. So I, I think it's good for her, you know, if they, you know, put her into the roster they could definitely use the help sometime uh you know and some, uh, you know around these circles of young ladies joining up with nxt right i mean mm-hmm. because we've got a lot of young talent who may not be at the point where they really need to be and madison rain has been doing it a while another great veteran to add to the roster yeah certainly i mean it's it's not just uh i mean it's y'all y'all mentioned that having such young talent having another veteran I mean, this doesn't mean that she will be there, right? This is right. a tryout, and then you know they could decide, okay, well that went okay, but we don't have a use for you or, or whatever. She mm-hmm. could want to be in a coach or or anything. I mean, she is doing stuff for Shimmer still, so you know she's keeping herself involved here and there. It's been a while since she left TNA, right? Because I remember us talking about uh, them releasing her or her leaving. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't remember exactly when, but you're right. I think she did leave, and uh, of course, like you said, doing shimmer and things like that have kept her busy. The one thing that you know kind of interests me, Sean, about this whole scenario is it makes me really wonder how WB is looking at young talent, especially in the women's division now that they have a lot of these ladies coming out of that May Young Classic, and they've signed some of these talents already. Are they at the point where it's going to be even more difficult for some of these veterans to get in because they are looking at so many other young talents? I, you know, I think the way WWE is going for sure. Um, Madison left TNA in July of this year, by the way. Uh, so it hasn't been too long ago. I didn't think it was. Um, and I definitely think like there's so many people that they have in. Um, in their system already, and they keep signing all these indie talents, and I have to imagine the spots are sort of, you know, drying up so much, and, and it's, you know, it's not like she's old, she's 31, uh, so, I mean, she's still got a lot of time ahead of her, it's just, I think there might be a lot invested elsewhere, I don't know exactly how many spots they're going to leave open for, for people who have been around for a while, even though I would argue that NXT could probably use a, a solid hand, like an Ashley, uh, like Madison Rain, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's like you get, we've all we talked about here. It's just they what they decide to do with how they they move this along is if you have the young talent in there, always having the veteran talent in there to work with them is better than just you know. It, I just don't see how it couldn't help, but if they. <laughs> You know, whatever, it it isn't that far from where she is. I'm assuming that she might be living in Orlando or in that area anyway because of, you know, Joss doing impact and everything. So, it, I mean, who knows? I'm sure we'll hear something one way or the other soon on what they decide. But with her being from... You know that with the, you know the tracker they have of bringing in former TNA talent. I wonder if they would use her as a talent there mm-hmm. to see if they can you know get anything out of that. Like you know she gets a reaction and people care, or if they just say okay, let's maybe you can use you as like a player coach kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. And, you know, I, I didn't even think about the Josh Matthews connection. You know, I, I really didn't put that into play. And, you know, that that's something else, you know, to look forward to is if she does get signed, are you excited about hearing Josh Matthews say over and over again, my wife is in the WWE, name dropping all the time. Oh, boy. <laughs> God, is he still doing that? Dropping WWE on the oh. show? Uh, Every once in a while, not as bad as it once was. I don't pay attention to him when I watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't need to, honestly. Um, but yeah, you know, another thing I would love to see is if you know in these tryouts, you know, 
they they really need a voice of reason to to kind of make these decisions. And I think you know, sure, you got the, the talent coaches and different people, like Vince, maybe kind of peeking in to see what they like, what they don't like. But I would just love to see Neville down there going Neville level, not on the Neville level. You know, just choose. <laughs> you know. So I do wonder if uh, Mickey James has something to do with this too. You know, with their her connection to formerly being in in TNA. Maybe you know she said something to somebody and. Maybe there you go. Yeah, never know. I mean, honestly, you know, knowing people's how you get jobs and how you get into things, so mm-hmm. that could be the case. Or, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, we talk a, a lot about you know different things, and we kind of go around in circles. But the one thing that we never really got to hear from Sean about was that whole Neville situation, and Sean. I mean, we still don't know what's true, what's not true about Neville, but, you know, it's interesting. I wanted to get your take on the Neville whole thing about him, you know, r- rumored to be walking out on WB because he didn't like the direction and all that. What, what did you think about that whole thing? Well, uh, you know, the thing is, if I'm somewhere and I'm looking at this guy that, granted, you know, Enzo's vocal ability is you could say almost worth more to the company than say Neville's wrestling ability, if you want to put it that way, right? Because it's a company that is sold on stories and on characters just as much as the wrestling, but you have so much great talent wrestling wise that just having a guy that goes out there and wrestles isn't necessarily that vital to WWE in the long run. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if Enzo's getting these opportunities because he, whether we think it's right or not for for the show and what it does to those characters that he's running down, that's the way Neville's looking at it. Well, I sat here and I, I was carrying this show for how long? And then this guy comes in and he just gets to walk in here and take my championship. Now it's with Kaliso. And they've they've now decided to go out of the purple, and and have a, a you know just regular looking title. I don't know if that means they're going to get done with the purple ropes or not either. But it's just the I guess the the point here is that I think Neville should I think Neville feels like well this is worse than whatever they did to Austin Aries. Now now they just took me like completely. Uh, sort of out of the picture, and now the th- whole thing's built around this guy, and and so like he may see that, well, there's really no way out of the cruiserweight division. So if I'm going to be stuck in the cruiserweight division for the rest of my career here, mm-hmm. uh, unless the cruiserweight division just dies, then maybe I can go to like a New Japan where the cruiser where the junior division is at least looked at in a different light and you can get out of the junior division and, and move forward uh, eventually as we're seeing Beretta do right now. We've seen others do uh, in the past. So uh, there's that avenue for him. He can go back to Dragon Gate. He can, he can go do the Indies. He can go to Ring of Honor. I mean, he can go to so many different places. And, and as we saw with Austin Aries with his tweet, right, you can make more money. Mm-hmm. It's not even about the money anymore. It's a, like, I don't blame him at all. And I think you might see a lot more people take this route of if I can't get out of the cruiserweight division and I'm stuck here for the rest of my career or until the cruiserweight division dies, then why am I here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like and it might. I don't know if enough of them leave that WWE has to start considering, oh, do we just fold this or do we actually try to do something with these guys and take them out of here? I don't know, but. I, I totally understand Neville on on his end, like you know. There mm-hmm. was uh, oh. there's a news article floating around too that said that apparently a lot of people backstage in WWE and, and this is kind of like flimsy, which is why I didn't put it on our quick hits list here. But there's there's a lot of people supposedly pondering doing the same thing that Neville did, even though WWE has come out and denied that. That he's still with he, he's still with the company. They haven't given him his release or anything like this. Uh, apparently, there are a lot of people in the ser- same situation who are disappointed where they are creatively and all that. And, and from you know that point of view, it's kind of hard not to blame him, right? I mean, we talk about how flat WWE programming is basically on a week to week basis. Um, 
And, and to, to Neville's point, I, I see it too. And I wonder if these people are more cruiserweights uh, who are realizing the same thing or seeing the same thing or assuming the same thing or whatever you want to say here or, or maybe mid-card guys who are just kind of sick and not getting used or, or whatever. But, I mean, it, it, it seems to be at least a sentiment that is carrying across WWE right now. And that that could be a problem that really comes back to bite them in the ass down the line, you know? For yeah, sure. it could. And it's that's also where you get the thought of they're signing too many people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... When you bring up, like, you know, Asuka's the next one. When you bring up Asuka and then you're bringing up all these other people and you have so many people that get stifled creatively because you only have so many spots for people. I'm not saying that everybody needs to be used on TV every single week because that's impossible too, right? Uh, even if you made an XC two hours, you, you couldn't get everybody on TV. So, yeah, it's one of those things, right, where... Regardless of if they're doing anything or not, it's there's so many things that they could be doing. They look at other people on for other promotions and they go, "Man, I could be there. I mm-hmm. could be, you know, champion here. I could I could be doing this or this promotion. I could be, uh, you know, we don't even, we don't you know, Lucha Underground is having its thing with the production going down, but like they could look at that and go, "Man, even if I'm only there for." a year or something I, I could be on that show i mean there there's so many options for these guys and it's whether it bites them in the ass or not right because i i could see 50 guys leave and vince still has it in his mind that this is wwe and it doesn't matter mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right so it's he's and he has that right to think about that because he's been sick man and this is wwe and he has a track record of this is where people want to go, and they eventually do come. I mean, we, we see how many of the, the older guys, you know, once they get into the, you know, their 30s, they start thinking about, you know, stability and and just coming here because you can now because people are, are coming after you uh, for NXT or whatever. And I just – for all these others that want to continue their, their career on past this and say, okay, I don't want to get stuck here – yeah, I'm making great money, but I don't want to be sitting here out of my mind, bored, or just feeling futile because I'm in this spot where I'm never going to get out of. You want to move on, and I think Neville is – credit to Neville, very much like Aries and some other guys, to think good enough of himself to say, okay, I don't need this. I'm going to be in this situation. Let me get myself out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're totally right, Sean, about Vince. And, you know, that could be, you know, an issue uh, for a lot of these guys where Vince says, okay, do it. I don't care. You know, I, I got somebody else to replace you tomorrow. Just go ahead and move on. Well, and- I'd imagine if he doesn't – that's the thing, though, right? Like, they don't have to grant you that release. Mm-hmm. Right. So if they care enough about Neville to where they don't want him to leave – Maybe just a threat of it, and this is why WWE would come out and go, no, 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 he didn't get released because they obviously don't want him to mm-hmm. go, right? So perhaps they're they're talking things out now, or whatever. But that that's the thing we also have to realize too. Just because you ask for it doesn't mean the company has to say, okay, yeah, you can leave. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, we have you under contract here, so you can either sit out your contract like Daniel Bryan. You know, you can what Daniel Bryan was doing and then they could maybe freeze it to where you can't do anything that f- then forces you to, you know, then work disgruntled or whatever. So th- there's so many ways they could go about this, but it seems like WWE cares enough about Neville where they didn't just go, okay, here, have it. But, sh- but you're right, Gary, there have been people where they just go, okay, you want to leave then go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, I, you know, all valid points, and I, I totally agree with you on that. And, and it is going to be interesting how WWE does handle the Neville situation and handle some of the other situations that could possibly pop up. We've seen, you know, a lot of the 
former superstars, we you know, of course, talked about this on Thursday, like Juice Robinson and guys like that, you know, Cody Rhodes even, who have become really successful, made some good money, and <clears throat> do a lot of good things. But here's the thing. You know, you can't flood the market just because you were part of WWE and you, oh, it's going to be great, and you just jump ship. Well, the more guys you get out there, that means you saturate the market, which means it's no longer going to be as big and as important for you. You're no longer going to be that WWE guy that's going to be in the championship matches. You're just going to be like, oh, you're the fourth and fifth WWE guy we got, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be the main event. You're going to be slotted here in the mid card and kind of stuck in the same hell you may have been with WWE. So. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just I'm really interested in the economics of it all. I really, really am seeing how this kind of eventually does come into fruition for a lot of these guys and what WWE wants to do, keep them, let them go, whatever. You know, the evolvement from WWE to the Indies is an interesting situation. Uh, so we'll follow that. We'll kind of continue on and just I was just really curious what Sean you had to say about that, and I feel a lot better kind of understanding where you're coming from on that. I, yeah, I want to see, and then like mm-hmm. right now, Summer Ray is battling with some websites about why are you writing about me retiring? I didn't say I was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, well, I, I don't blame him though because uh, where has she been? I mean, did, yeah. She got killed off in the Marine, <laughs> but uh, did she really get killed off in the Marine movie? I'm just wondering if that really happened. You know, <laughs> they did say that the reason was is because they miss her, so they wanted to write something about her. Uh, they didn't mean for it to say retired, I guess, but just just to let WWE and everybody else know that you know she's missed and they want to see her, yeah. I guess. But it's just a weird way of all that going down. Yeah, very very weird way. <laughs> but that's okay. Hey, it's good that she's missed. That's that's very important, you know. Um, but you know, let's talk about Jinder Mahal. Uh, and the reason we're going to talk about Jinder Mahal here is because we reported be last. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, for sure. Maybe he, about the one point thirty billion in India, but the rest of us, you know. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people were, you know, because we reported about this shoulder injury. People were like, oh my god, we may actually get a chance to see him not on TV on SmackDown, but that that's not likely. Um, he's even reporting that he's not injured, but some people are saying he's working hurt. However, it is. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, WWE wants him in that slot of, you know, WWE champion. They're going to have him there. Doesn't matter. What is interesting, though, is that Mahal apparently has big plans for himself, as I guess he should, right? Um, he's even been, you know, doing things like calling out John Cena for WrestleMania time and, and making reference to Brock Lesnar, things like that. So this is interesting. Uh, the guy's got a lot of confidence and, you know, it is what it is. But man, Paul, I, I'm interested in the fact that, you know, this guy is kind of going this far. To, uh, does he really believe his own hype? That's what I'm wondering. Is this hubris or is this knowing where you're at and trying to play it up like it matters? Um, the injury thing is, is sort of whatever, right? I put that in there because uh, it's kind of a retraction. I guess he could be working hurt. He says his trapezius muscles are so big it forces his shoulders forward. So whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> uh, he he also thinks that he could surpass CM Punk's title reign as far as days go. Um, like you said, he calls oh, up God, for please. WrestleMania. And there's a lot of rumors going around that it's going to be him and Brock one-on-one at Survivor Series. Which, I, 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 why, like, this can't, they can't think this highly of him, right? Like, I, I don't, I don't see it, I don't understand, and maybe somebody else out there does, but every time we've seen him in the ring, it's, it's, it's just the one trick pony, right? He knows one match, and it's barely passable, right? And it's, if we have to sit through 434 days of that, uh, can we just, call SmackDown a write-off at that point? Like, is it... What's the point, you know? Yeah, oh, God. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sean, I, I, I mean, can't handle Like, I, I just can't imagine how Brock's not gonna kill him, so... Yeah, exactly. Like, like he's just gonna look like a big bag of crap. I, I don't know. Are the Singh brothers just gonna cause so many problems that, like, gender's gonna be able to escape out of that, too? I just... Well, the the funny thing is, I could see Paul Heyman like just taking out the Sings. <laughs> They're just that, you know. I could like, see Paul Heyman beating Jinder for the belt. 
<laughs> yeah. Man, those are some those are some uh, big trapezius muscles that Paul Heyman has to deal with all of a sudden. But and, uh, you know, like I, it's look, uh, so many guys, right? If you're in this position, you're not going to really come out and go, "Yeah, I'm injured," mm-hmm. right? Because this is the WWE champion. Yeah, I get it. All of a sudden, they're going to pay attention to him more, and and the doctors might be looking at them and and they start might start making plans of well what do we do now if gender's really hurt and you don't want to that cross any 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 of that to cross anybody's mm-hmm. mind right so he's going to downplay it uh, just like you would in 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 sports or whatever so i don't think that the people were wrong that were reporting that or or you guys talking about it it's just him doing what you do right saying i'm not hurt I don't know why you guys are talking about that and whatever. Yeah, you're right. And, and you know, Jinder Mahal it has a lot to do with, you know, keeping WWE global, especially in India, you know, all those people that are, are definitely pining for him. Uh, but, you know, for them, it may be also something where they don't want to perceive him as being a weak guy, Right, the, the, maybe the Indian audience. I, I don't know the the culture super well, but you know it, it may be a case where they want him to look as strong as possible. So any injuries that he's going to have, they're going to keep the play down very very low. And this guy is going to you know have all the confidence in the world. But once again, who knows? Maybe this is actually him just really buying his hype, or maybe it's him putting things out there that way that you know when people are reading articles about him and things like that. On the global scene, maybe not even just the American scene, people think of him as bigger and badder than maybe you know we perceive him for sure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know if that's the case or not. I just think that that could be you know, maybe a little bit of the devil's advocate in this situation for Jinder Mahal. Um, but yeah, I just worry he facing if he faces Brock Lesnar, I worry that there's going to be something they consider a hate crime uh, happening there. So, boy. Uh, but anyway, I wouldn't be surprised if Brock says something he's not supposed to say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you thought gender making fun of Nakamura was bad. Wait till you hear Brock <laughs> gender. So, uh, but you know, here's another situation uh, that I really found interesting this past week, and of course, you know, I, I want to get your, your opinion about this one too, Sean. Uh, we know we found out last week that Jimmy Jacobs was fired from WWE's riding team after he had taken a picture with a Bullet Club outside of Monday Night Raw. Uh, WWE did not take kindly to that; they did not appreciate that. And now Jimmy Jacobs is out there free to do as he pleases. Well, at Global Wars in Chicago, we find Jimmy Jacobs doing it again. He's taking a picture with the Bullet Club. Wow, it appears like Ring of Honor is uh, back in action with Jimmy Jacobs. Well, I mean, that's he—he he was there for how many years at, before he went to WWE? That just makes uh, too much sense uh, for him to to go back there if they, if that's what's going on. Uh, you know, it's smart for him, right? Get get. Uh, Get yourself out there with Boy Club and all that stuff. I mean, it's it's the hot ticket right now. Ride the wave if you're Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, you know, I think what this is is WWE is starting to realize that this it, they're starting to get on their radar, right? New Japan and Boy Club and and all that stuff, Young Bucks, and so you're on their radar now. So what are they going to do? They're going to go after you. And any way they can, uh, you know, whether it's legally with the cease and desist stuff or just, you know, start issuing trademarks on stuff that they own or or whatever. I mean, as dumb as it is to trademark the too sweet thing, WWE can legally do that, right? So uh, I, I think this is a win for everybody. It sucks about the legal stuff, but it's a win for everybody because your, your company and your product and your brand – is getting recognized by by your competitors. So, uh, you know, and as far as Jimmy Jacob goes, I, that, uh, I guess it sucks for WWE creatively, but we really don't know how much influence he had there at all. 
you know, so supposedly, to really know how much of a loss it is. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, supposedly he was the one behind helping Chris Jericho come up with the list um, and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Uh, if he, I hope he is back with Ring of Honor, personally, uh, the, in, and I hope he is with them creatively because I think they could really use an overhaul there. Uh, there are times where it really feels like uh, Delirious is basically out of ideas. Uh, and it's just sort of trying to keep the status quo until something can come along to change the landscape, like like Cody kind of did uh, in the Bullet Club, for sure. But uh, th- you're right. I mean, this this makes sense. I think me and Gary, we talked about him showing up there pretty quick if, if, uh, if he could. And it, it didn't even take two days. So... <laughs> <laughs> We're that good, Paul. We're yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is, you know, it's a sucky situation for Jimmy Jacobs on the, the fact, you know, he's losing out on a lot of money working with WWE. Mm. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this guy has, you know, a lot going on for himself. So it's not like he's going to miss that much work as proof here um but you know I, i'm just happy he landed on his feet pretty quickly and you know to, to kind of poke fun at wb in a way by taking another picture with the bullet club yeah. it, it's golden <laughs> it, it's it, it just means a lot to me because now vince sees that picture is like gosh i hate that kid you know mm-hmm. <laughs> so really kind of curious what's going to happen with you know the rest of the the situation for jimmy jacobs when it comes to was he going to be riding more for ring of honor are they going to have him as an on-air talent somewhere you just never know what they're going to do something else that happened at a global wars event we have mark briscoe dislocating his elbow and this is actually in pittsburgh when he does it and this is a match against hiromo uh wow it sounds painful he, he actually set it back in place and uh continued and I mean, this doesn't look like he's going to be out a super long time or anything, but man, that, that just that sounds painful, Paul. It does not sound comfortable at all, uh, and it, I don't think it'll be the first time that we've seen on on ROH TV, uh, pay per view or otherwise, of somebody p- putting something back into place. Uh, I remember vividly earlier this year somebody else doing the same, and it also actually might have been Mark Briscoe who did it. So uh, <laughs> this is. Uh, it, it must have been a pretty scary situation, though, uh, especially for somebody who looks to be involved in a pretty major angle, depending on, I guess, Bully Ray. Uh, Bully Ray wanting to stick around. He keeps talking about retiring since the unfortunate incident at uh, Death Before Dishonor with Jay Briscoe. So uh, we'll talk about that more during the Ring of Honor review for sure, but it, kind of a scary deal, I would say. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I... I saw a gif of it, of his elbow, like, sticking out mm-hmm. or whatever. It uh, looked pretty nasty. Uh, so, you know, credit to him for popping it back in and keep going. And, hey, that's what uh, that's what athletes do most of the time. So, go uh, Mark Briscoe. Yeah, it's no one it being a wrestling thing i don't think he's going to miss much time if it was like another sport where they had to evaluate that and all that he might miss like a a game or something but yeah mark briscoe doing his thing yeah exactly see aaron rogers if you, if you were only mark briscoe you could just keep going you know but you're not yeah you know just somehow he's going to walk straight with the broken collarbone there <laughs> Just pop it back into place, man. <laughs> there's a there's a great meme floating around where the text just read Aaron Rodgers is backstage singing the uh like a good neighbor, State Farm is there with a new collarbone. Nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, you gotta love memes. Oh boy. <laughs> But no, uh, you know, it, this is interesting, you know, we continually see this kind of stuff and, you know, like you said, this is not the first time this has happened, but these guys just power through it and just make their way through the match and finish it and go on. And I, I just think to myself, how would I react if this happened to me? Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't imagine dislocating my elbow. But, you know, then again, you may, I've, what I've heard from people is when that happens, you don't even think about it. You just kind of reset and move on. You don't even think about it at first, and you just kind of, I guess, it's maybe it's a psychological thing with people. They just think, fix your body, 
then instead of really paying attention to the pain immediately, who knows? Mm-hmm. But it's kind of cr- crazy and, and kind of makes me curious too at the same time. Uh, you know, we got one last thing here on the quick hits, and that is MLW. Uh, they're considering going back to doing monthly shows, Paul. Kind of tell us about this. Uh, so Major League Wrestling was one of uh, the first independents, I think, to sort of, sort of rise up after WWE bought out WCW in 2002. They ran for about two years uh, and then sort of packed up shop. But Court Bauer and all of them kept the MLW brand running, obviously. They have all the podcasting networks that they do now. And um, apparently this show did really well uh, as far as drawing. I, I Larry's review kind of pointed that it was just sort of a mediocre show. But uh, they want to run more in Florida, around Jacksonville and, and Orlando and, and elsewhere around there. So... I mean, it's not like they aren't going to be hurting for, for people to show up, because I think Florida's a pretty big uh, hotbed just for wrestling. Now you have NXT and, obviously, uh, Impact for whatever degree they are, but there are tons of other places that run there as well. And You know, it's uh, it's kind of neat that uh, you know the brand found a way to keep on living and come back in this fashion. I mean, it, we're talking about a company that used to have Satoshi Kojima as their world champion, which was kind of cool. Yeah, and he, you know, Corb Barrow worked for AAA mm-hmm. for a long time until recently he, uh, after the situation with that Trouble Mania where they had the problems, he kind of sort of quit after that. But he's, yeah, like you said, he's, he's kept that MLW thing going and relatively affordable too. They haven't, they didn't just absolutely price that thing out of the market or whatever. And yeah, they just used that name and they were smart to keep it going. And mm-hmm. just okay. Well, now we can run shows, and uh, you know, good that it can draw. And and he's done a really good job himself of, you know, being involved in the Wally Manias, and and also mm-hmm. being involved around WrestleMania weekend too. So, yeah, it's been a, a smart business and a smart plan to be able to do that now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it, whatever makes you money. And people are interested in do it. I mean, if you can find a way to to make this work, you got to do it. You got to take those chances, and I think it's a good deal for MLW. So, no uh, bad things for me on that one for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean that pretty much rounds out what we got for everyone for quick hits for this episode. So there you go. Be looking forward to more uh, awesome quick hits. Uh, we'll have some really probably. Interesting stuff coming out uh, after we talk about a few of these things. I'm sure things will shake out and break out, and then we'll have something tomorrow. We'll be like, dang it, I wish we'd have waited a day because mm-hmm. we could have talked about something mm-hmm. big. But, well, d- guess what? We have another episode to do that. And then, of course, it's a Friday morning episode. So, of course, check out those quick hits. But now we've got one last thing to do tonight, and that is talk some Ring of Honor. So let's do that now. All right, uh, Ring of Honor comes in this week, uh, showing the addiction coming up to the building and trying to get in, but security has orders to not let them in since they have been interfering in everybody's business left and right. And uh, naturally, I guess we could have assumed that this was going to happen again pretty quick as uh, you have Kushida here in the opener against Scorpio Sky, who's a nice surprise for me. Uh, he's been a, he's used to be a regular with PWG from the beginning back in 2002 to somewhere in the mid-2000s. I want to say like 2007, 2008. And then I think he took some time off and came back and, and has really been having like this sort of renaissance to his career in the last three years. Uh, he works Wrestle Circus pretty often as well as uh, a lot of other places uh, all over the country now. And I think he'd be a really great fit here. I hope we see more of him here. And he really got to look like he was sort of going blow for blow with Kushida here before uh, he gets caught by Kushida in uh, an arm bar after he leaps off the top rope. But here comes the addiction. Kazarian uh, comes into the ring and kicks Kushida low to cause the DQ. And then Scorpio eats Celebrity Rehab. But here comes Jay Lethal running down the ring. We take a commercial break, and they show him challenging the addiction to a tag match with himself and Kushida taking them on somewhere down the line. I thought this was fine, right? Uh, I was more surprised by Kushida and Scorpio Sky here, but 
it's nice to see that the addiction are going to get more mixed up with people besides just the usual suspects in the tag division. Oh, I agree. And I'm really looking forward to it. You know, the addiction has just a way about them that they can match up with most anybody. So that's what makes me very, very happy about this situation. Uh, you know, what kind of sucks is I do DVR Ring of Honor, and it kind of cut off the beginning for some reason when it comes to their open to the show, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're talking backstage, trying to get in, and they wouldn't, they weren't allowed in the building, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, it kind of made me sad. I missed some of that, but nonetheless, I think this, this point here is what really matters, and that's that they're willing to ruin every match that they can. Uh, Koshida is a guy that I'm sure they're going to work where regret messing with yeah. um, but uh, I think it's going to be fun and I'm glad yeah. that Jay Lethal is going to be that guy I think it's going to be a really fun matchup when they take on each other and oh and Sky be cut out pretty bad there <laughs> oh I'm sorry can you hear me now yeah yeah absolutely uh, it, it's uh, Sky is the guy that I'm kind of looking at and I'm I know I, I'm not familiar with like you are um, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm kind of curious. He, he's on my radar now. I hope they do show us more of him because I want to see what all the hype's about. Yeah, it's, uh, he's nowhere near as quick as I think he used to be, but he, he he's much he's a much crisper wrestler now. If you, if you if I guess you catch where I'm going, yeah. Uh, yeah. We get some uh, recap of the Jay Briscoe Tommy Dreamer segment from last week, which uh brings out bully ray who apologize he's got no theme music the lights are dimmed and he's wearing sunglasses uh and he's speaking quietly and he apologizes to everybody because this is what his doctor told him to do as as we've talked about on the show and the in light of his injury coming out and uh this is basically almost like as close to a retirement speech as you can give without really committing to the idea um he wants to yell and scream at, at Jay Briscoe about how he's coming for his revenge, but he doesn't know if that's ever going to happen because of the severity of the concussion and how it's all sort of built up and lets everybody in the building know he's considering stepping away from the business for his health and for his family and all this other stuff. And he thanks everybody and gives them a wave. And then out comes Mark Briscoe uh, and apologizes um, if he, you know, for whatever he might've done, but he lets bully know that, you know, I, I've always got your back. Right. Uh, it, it, that was Jay. That was not a Briscoe brothers attack, you know? So I thought this was kind of a nice moment. If this is the end for bully Ray, uh, who did get some time during the global wars tour again to put Kazarian through a table. And then he gave a piece of it away to a kid, uh, and said, this is probably the last table I'm ever going to break it. It certainly seems like retirement might be on the horizon for him. And it, it is a sad thing. It mm-hmm. really is, you know, because he's given a lot to the wrestling business. He is a, definitely a legend in the tag team department for sure. Um, but he, he's going to be a legend no matter what. It, it does, you know, kind of suck that wrestling may be out of his uh, foray completely for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Um, can he be an on air talent? Sure. Can he, you know, get in the ring? Probably not. I, I, I'm not going to say that that's for fact, but it just seems like it, especially for the fact that head trauma is such a dangerous thing to mess with. And really, do you want to put your career on the line just to have another couple matches? I, I, I'm not sure, but your their life on the line is what I should say mm-hmm. uh, for a couple matches. I don't think so. And the way this guy was talking and the way the bully Ray just kind of seemed just – like he was there, but he just it was just so helpless. It shows you the mm-hmm. dangers of what these guys put themselves through, and I felt so bad for him. I really, really did. I uh, hope that things do get better for him. Hey, for a little while there, I, you know, it almost made you feel like you were watching it work. Yeah, Paul. Mm-hmm. It really did. I kept waiting for him to take off the sunglasses and say, in your face, mother. And it- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got you all. It was all a plan all along. Uh, but no, it, it wasn't. And that's what kind of saddens me. Uh, mm-hmm. That just seems like this is more and more real. So I, I'm going to follow this guy and hopefully, you know, better news comes out. But if it's time for him to retire, he just needs to. Just to do it, just to be done with it, because it's not worth anything to take his life and put it in worse situations, you know. And and now that I wonder if he is still dating uh, Velvet Sky, uh, because that's something that I'm kind of curious. I haven't seen any tweets by her or anything like that about you know her saying that he's going to retire or anything like that either. 
Yeah, uh, and also hats off to the live crowd there in Vegas that night who uh, applauded and chanted quieter uh, than they usually would. So I thought that was kind of classy. Yeah, very classy. Yeah. Uh, we get uh, a recap about Kenny King uh, winning the TV title, Death Before Dishonor, and a recap of his promo last week that caused Shane Taylor, Chuck T, Punishment Martinez, and Mark Briscoe to come on down and look to challenge him. Uh, and then Ring of Honor announces that there is going to be a four-corner survival match next week to crown a new number one contender for that championship, so something to look forward to there. And then we get uh, the Bullet Club celebration. The entire Young Buck clan is here. The the uh, the Buck's dad is here, who's, who's their business manager. Jesus, easy for me to say. Uh, you have Brandy. Shane Taylor is out there, too. He's getting paid by Cody, essentially, to, uh, to watch the entryway. Uh, as he comes into the ring, uh, puts over the Bucks, and talks about how the, originally they had the biggest contract signing in the company history until now, and he inks the inks his name on the paper. And uh, after a handshake and a hug with a bunch of them, they all leave, and he says it's time for business. He wants to defend the championship and uh, basically runs down how this guy's the second most popular guy in Ring of Honor behind him. He's got this great entrance, and... Everybody in the audience, of course, thinks it's Dalton Castle, but he's still hurt, and it turns out to be nobody other than Cheeseburger, Gary. That's right, he gets Yay! the world title match. <laughs> Cody doesn't even take off all of his suit either, uh, which is great, and this is a really, really fun little old-school thing that doesn't I don't think gets done enough anymore. It's Cody completely wrestling against somebody he doesn't take seriously and go in the full nine with it. And to that end, Cody's match formula that he likes to work really works. Uh, and Cheeseburger almost comes out uh, with a victory here. Uh, uses uh, a belt that uh, Cody took off throughout the match, too, who I should mention just progressively got closer and closer to being naked throughout the entire thing. Like, just article after article of clothing coming away. Eventually, Cody has enough, throws his jacket in Cheeseburger's face, locks in the American Deathlock, and that's all she wrote. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed this entire thing from top to bottom. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm right there with you. Mm-hmm. It was just fun to watch. And uh, not not the Cody undressing part. That was kind of awkward. <laughs> uh, felt like I was in Brandy's bedroom. Uh, but no, uh, thank, thank God that, that it ended quickly. Uh, but no, I mean, overall, yes, I, I love this whole thing. It was a great formula. You're right. And, you know, Cheeseburger is just a blast because he's mm-hmm. the ultimate underdog. Everyone loves him. He, he's just got this way about him to, to just make you care about everything he's doing. And so I'm very, very happy with what we got out of this. And, you know, at the end of the day, it, you know, just makes Cody look strong. And that's what it should do. Um but you you really just have a you know an entertaining match here mm-hmm. overall. Uh Shane Taylor that's the one thing I keep questioning like what what's this all about? Why does he need him to protect him when he's got the entire bullet club behind him? You know? Yeah, that's a fair uh, point. <laughs> I, I just don't understand that. It's like, hey, I got money to waste. I mean, so, hey, Cody, you got money to waste? I'll be glad to show up at shows. You can pay me. I'll stand in the entrance way and yeah. do nothing. <laughs> Glad to do that. Good seat in the house, too. So. It'd be, yeah, it'd be cool. Like, I would not mind it. I mean, it certainly keeps Shane Taylor on TV, which is, which is great. I, I mean, it's definitely a reason for Cody to show up. Like, look at all this money I have. Look at this big ring. Look at all these great things I have, you know, because I'm so awesome. It's it's a it's just, I think it's a really fun thing. But I, I, you make a solid point. Like, you've got running buddies. What do you need? To hire a hitman for, essentially. <laughs> yeah, but hey, if if... If you're going to run with somebody, Shane Taylor is not a bad one to to have on your side. That's you know? true. Uh, we get a Kingdom promo. They run down Ring of Honor who claim that there is a conspiracy against them for them just not getting the six-man championships back, of course. Uh, so tonight they're going to prove why they are the kings of Ring of Honor by beating a team that has yet to beat them in any carnation that is Search and Destroy. Uh, and then we get a Coleman's Pulpit segment where you have the the dogs, which is the big dog, Rhett Titus, and little Willie, Will Ferrara. And uh, this is basically Rhett making short jokes at Will Ferrara for about three minutes while they talk about how they've been betrayed by partners uh, and how they're looking to take all of that and use it as a motivation to get bigger success in this carnation of tag teams uh, that they're going to run with, so... 
Any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, you know, Red Tannis yeah, did, did, did fine. Um, mm-hmm. Will Ferrara, what, what the heck is, is this new <laughs> thing you're doing here? It, it's almost like you either watch too much Enzo or you started taking drugs. I don't know which one. Why not both? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So uh, I've I've really felt like for a minute there I was watching uh, Enzo and Loki's kid like spazzing <laughs> out, and uh, so uh, here we go. And he's shaking his head, move, moving around, acting like he's a big bad guy, and all this. It, it was a little overdone, uh, but whatever. This is fine. You know, I, I don't know that I took away uh, just a ton from it. Both these guys really need to work on the charisma department, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it was okay. You know, I, it was what it was. You know, I, I really enjoy pull, uh, Coleman's pulpit. It's fun. It's interesting. Um, but, you know, it, this is a couple of characters. I just kind of felt like it was an odd one. Yeah. Uh, and that brings us to the main event, right? The Kingdom taking on Search and Destroy, which in this incarnation is the Motor City Machine Guns and Jonathan Gresham. And the kingdom end up stealing a win. Uh, Matt Taven uh, rolls up the tights on, I believe, uh, Saban and uh, basically runs out into the front row and starts rubbing the win into this little girl's face, uh, which is just absolutely priceless, if you ask me. But this, it's a fun match. It just it, it didn't hold my attention all that well is the problem. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, I was tired or I just wasn't really in the mood. But it, it never really drew me in even though they were doing all the usual high flying flashy stuff that all these guys like to do. Yeah, I mean I think it was fine. I this wasn't the most flashy match. It really wasn't. And it just kind of did what it needed to do. It it, mm-hmm. it went through the paces. And, and sometimes that's enough to keep you going. Sometimes it's just okay, you know, let's get to the next thing. And this was your you know, supposed to be the biggest thing on the show and it just was kind of okay. So I, I you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. That's kind of a weird thing. Isn't that kind of oxymoron? You know, but I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think it's because I'm a little lost like you. I wish I could say that I really enjoyed it, which mm-hmm. it, it, it was a positive match. Don't get me wrong. They did some good things. The ending there, you're right, Paul. I love it. Rubbing the little girl's face, that's classic. That is, that's noteworthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but outside of that, this is just kind of a match. And, you know, search and destroy, they can't win them all. So here you go. There's a loss. And I really think the kingdom needed this win. I think it's important. And I'm still impressed by what they're doing here. Yeah, they're just a really fun group to get behind. And Matt Taven, who I uh, didn't have a lot of hope for once the original car- incarnation of the kingdom disbanded, it, they've really just run with this. And it's worked great. Uh, so, I mean, if this gets them into a feud with Search and Destroyer of the tag titles, and maybe they bring in the six-man titles at some point, uh, it, it could just turn into this really big thing for both groups who have a lot of young talent who could really use the spotlight for sure. Oh, definitely. And I think some really good matches to be looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, that's, uh, that's it for this episode of Ring of Honor, too. So, hopefully next week is uh, a little bit more enjoyable. There's a lot of angles going on, though. Yeah, I think the lack of Silas Young really hurt. That's uh, true. I and, mean, that, that hurts yeah. any show. Yeah, definitely. So maybe we'll get more of him and some other uh, great components. But until then, uh, we are done with Ring of Honor, and we are done with this show. That's right. Yeah, it's I know kind of a quicker one, but that's fine. We've had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, of course, be looking forward to our next show Friday morning, the episode. 269 Part 2, where we are going to break down and preview TLC, get you into all the things that we think are going to happen, and, you know, of course, maybe some predictions that may be shocking. Who knows? Plus, we'll be talking Ultima Lucha, Tres, finishing out that. That'll be a two-hour episode that we'll be kind of quickly going through and really kind of telling you our thoughts on that, and hopefully that won't be the last time we talk Lucha. And we'll... uh, Get into Impact. That's right. We have Impact Wrestling and, of course, you know, great quick hits to be getting into and all that. So you've got a great show coming your way this next Friday. Be looking forward to that. Want to make sure we give our big shout-outs for 411mania.com and last word on prowrestling.com. Thank you to those guys. Hey, make sure you go subscribe, rate, and review over at Wrestling to the Max. Yeah, that's right. You hit that button, and you'll get all that great content I just mentioned and a lot more 
Plus, you'll also make sure you want to go and comment, rate, and review, uh, do all that stuff. That gives us a little bit more help just because more people get to see us when you go do those things. Don't forget, W2Mnet.com. That's the place where you go find all your great wrestling needs and a lot more. And, of course, you know, a lot more great wrestling shows like Wrestling Unwrapped, Running All Podcasts, and all the other great So there you go, guys. We are done, though, uh, sadly, but we can't wait to talk to you guys later this week. Until then, for myself, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser, we will catch you guys down the road. Until then, if you're not living life to the max, not living life at all. You know it. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.